Warning, Channel Robozoid contains adult language, adult content, strong opinions, and verbal brutality. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, fellow patriots, it is I, the Robozoid. And well, I guess today is the big day, election day. And well, let's face it here, um, a lot of these people, they're going to wake up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for the whole thing, like Pawn Vanity and Liar Inky Ham and all those people, the whole Fox News gang. But <clears throat> I got something a little bigger than that, you see? Well, you remember how we mentioned that Donald Trump had gone on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast? And, well, quite frankly, it was a, it was a successful three-hour interview, the way that everything was supposed to go, unscripted, off-the-cuff, and really, it was just uh, Joe and Donald shooting the shit for uh, three hours, and it wasn't scripted, and it was turned out to be really good, as opposed to, let us say, Shamala Harrinan, who really wanted to control the interview on her turf and on her terms. Uh, she wanted the, que the question scripted. She wanted uh, everything to go her way, and when it wouldn't go her way, and Rogan told, turned her down on that request, she backed out. She said, no, forget it. Well, in this clip I'm about to show you, well, here's where Rogan has a total turnabout uh, when he on his feelings about interviewing Donald Trump, let alone even voting for him, because quite frankly, it says a lot. Uh, the interview, of course, <clears throat> it's not with Trump himself, uh, but this is actually done very, very recently with none other than Elon Musk himself. And so you're going to see this interview, and it's kind of a long one, so I'm not going to try to interrupt as much as I possibly can if, if I can avoid it. So let's take a look. By the way, I'm not a Trump supporter in any way, shape, or form. I've had the opportunity to have him on my show more than once. I've said no every time. I don't want to help him. I'm not interested in helping him. The, the, the night is still young. We'll see. If I have him on, the night yeah. is still young? Yeah. You think so, I'll have him on? I think you'll have him on. Really? Why do you think that? Because you'll have Putin on? <laughs> <laughs> and you're competitive as fuck. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think ultimately, uh, I mean, you had you had a lot of people that I think you might you may otherwise be skeptical. Would I have a good conversation? Which I think is your metric. You don't care about politics. So can I have a good conversation? And I think you you had um, people people like Kanye on, for example, and yeah. you had a great conversation with him. I think you, I, I think. Uh, yeah, but Kanye is an artist. Like, but Kanye doing well or not doing well doesn't change the course of our country. Yeah, but you don't. Do you really? An artist? That's of debatable. Of our country based on a conversation? I think you can revitalize and rehabilitate someone's image. Two years uh, later. Oh, wow. I have some more big news, Megan. I'm just getting this right now. So somebody that's very, very respected uh, asked me to do his show two weeks ago, and I said, why not? And to me, it's very big because he's uh, the biggest there is, I guess, in that world by far. Somebody said the biggest beyond anybody in a long time. And his name is Joe Rogan, and he's never done this before. And it just came over the wires that Joe Rogan just endorsed me. Is that good? Thank you, Joe. So nice. And he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that stuff. And he tends to be a little bit more liberal than some of the people in this room. No, I had a lot, a lot of fun, and he was amazing. And uh, he was, uh, it was a three hour interview. In fact, I was two hours late for a rally that we had. I had explained that a little bit. And it was cold out that night. We flew and but we had to make it. We were two, more than two hours late, and they understood. I said, you know, I, I just was interviewed by a very interesting guy, and he just kept going on. They called it a long form, and it could have gone a lot longer, but he was great. 
And uh, he's not a person that does endorsements, but he did an endorsement. So I just want to thank Joe Rogan. That's fantastic. I really shouldn't have to ask, but I wonder whether or not this endorsement from Joe Rogan is a good thing. I mean, will it help him or will it be a hindrance in the, in the long run? Because this is it, man. Today is the big day, election day. And if you think that we're going to have this election over with by tonight, well, you better be prepared to think again. You know how these things work. But nevertheless, Rogan endorsing Trump, well... That's kind of interesting because, yeah, like Trump said, he is a lot more liberal-minded and probably wouldn't endorse anybody. But since Kamala was too chicken shit to show up on his show and wanted things her way, well, and Trump did go on his show for a full three hours, and it was uh, not a controlled interview. It was the way it should be. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, no, no script, uh, no uh, t teleprompter. It was just two guys having a chat. You know, just two guys shooting the breeze there. And that's the way it worked. So, I don't know, it could be a help to Trump. Now, as recently as a couple days ago, Elon Musk himself went on the Joe Rogan experience. And, well, to be quite honest with you, he, he pretty much laid it on the line, saying, we've got to vote this time around. Everyone's got to vote. And if we don't, and if we don't save this country, this may very well be the last election we'll ever have. The country will be completely effed. Take a look. Yeah, John, John Wick. Yeah. The fucking squirrel thing is bananas. Yeah. That squirrel thing is in the squirrel thing? I, I, see, here's the thing about the, the, the whole squirrel thing is, is that um, how, how can it be that we live in America, uh, supposedly land of the free, and the, you know, the, the government can barge into your home with guns, uh, so if you resist, you're going to get shot, um, and then take your your pets and execute them. Um, and if they can do that to your pets, what do you think they can do to you? I know that's not an exaggeration. Absolutely, it, it sounds so, like you're you're oh that's so crazy. How can you make that connection? But it's that's no, it's why a, would a, you kill a, that cute little squirrel that was obviously a pet and trained from the time it was a baby? Yes. If you see the interaction that guy has with that squirrel, it was wonderful. It was really cute. Yes, absolutely. There, there, there's, it, it was just obviously a, it was a beloved pet, pet squirrel um, and a raccoon too, um, and doing no harm. Um, and the the, the government comes in, barges into the guy's house, takes his pets and kills them. And, you know, I, I think this should this should really get people out there mobilized. Fucked up. And yeah. they shouldn't have killed that squirrel. They shouldn't have killed that fucking, that, that squirrel. I mean, <laughs> this is we not heard about, you know? Aww, um, look at that little guy. And that squirrel clearly had a love Great relationship. Great squirrel with that was guy. cute. He would hop all over him. And a little climb hat. On him. That's that's adorable. I mean, it was that and was his these pet. idiot that Democrats that murdered this kid. Murdered this poor as squirrel. His protector, as his his companion. Yes. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with that. And in Texas, it's totally legal. You can have a fucking zebra out here. You can have whatever you want. And that's the argument for. Now I believe they started off the interview talking about Peanut the squirrel uh, from up in New York where a bunch of Democrat crazies, I mean, just brown-shirted and just, and just the modern-day Hitler brown shirts of uh, the Democrat Party burst into this house, and they, and they took Peanut the Squirrel, and they euthanized him. Why did they do it? Well, because that's what the government is going to do if, God forbid, <clears throat> if, God forbid, Shamala Harridan becomes president. <clears throat> what they're going to do is basically break into your house and houses and they are going to try to snatch up your pets and euthanize them because you shouldn't have anything and that includes pets well let me tell you this this is one guy who if the government tries to lay a finger on my cat i will kill them with my bare hands trust me i mean i would stain my hands probably and uh, my hands would be redder than my blouse. The reason I'm wearing red? Well, because it's patriotic. But nevertheless, what the Democrats did, that is unpatriotic. That is, that is wrong, just breaking into somebody's house 
and stealing their pets and then euthanizing them for no good reason other than the government telling you, you can't have them. You can't have them. You can't have anything. We are the haves and you're going to be the have-nots because we're the Democrats and that's how we want things. <laughs> Well, that's exactly the way things are going to go if, God forbid, that woman becomes president. So get out there and vote today. Tell them that we're not voting for this harridan. We're not voting for the squirrel killer. We're not voting for the woman who allows <clears throat> the eating of cats and dogs up in Springfield, Ohio. We're not going to allow that. And we're going to allow more of Rogan talking with Elon Musk here. So let's get on with it, okay? That and and changing Twitter. I, I don't think we would be where we're at right now. I think it was it was a pivotal moment. I think historically, when people look back on it, it's going to be a pivotal moment in this very bizarre fight for the freedom of information. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the time, I said, I think, like, look, I think this is. Um, existential to the United States. Um, it's existential to democracy. Um, because if you, if you don't, if you don't have freedom of speech, you don't have democracy. Okay, because if people if you don't have freedom of speech, people cannot make an informed vote. If, if, they're, if they're just being fed propaganda, uh, and, and, and there's no freedom of speech, democracy is an illusion. Um, so uh, freedom of speech is the bedrock of democracy. That's why Freedom of speech is the First Amendment. Once you lose freedom of speech, you lose democracy. Game over. That's why I bought Twitter. And you see, of course, what Elon was getting at and the reason why he ended up buying Twitter. Because he wanted Twitter to be a free speech platform. Because when X was Twitter, they wouldn't allow free speech. I mean, look what they did to Trump. They banned him off the platform, you know. The right tried to set up their own kind of platform, uh, which, if you'll forgive me, I've already forgotten the name of, but it started with a P. It'll come to me eventually. But uh, nevertheless, the left shut that platform down because they didn't want any free speech. They didn't want the truth out. They didn't want real information getting out to the people. <clears throat> and also, they didn't seem to care, well, I guess now at this point, that squirrel lives matter. You know, I'm beginning to think here that Democrat lives don't matter at all because, let's face it, we don't matter to them. We don't matter at all to them. I mean, they just want us to make, they just want us to be subjects again instead of citizens the very same way that Obama treated us during his regime. You remember how the smooth talking, skinny guy, the smooth talking, skinny guy with the Urkel fade haircut? Uh, basically treated everybody. He treated everybody like subjects. He didn't treat anybody like a citizen at all. He thought he was King Obama, ruler of all, and that we were all his loyal subjects. We were not citizens to him. We were just his subjects. <laughs> uh, kneel at the altar of King Obama. Well, that turned out, out to be a total facade, because to be honest with you, well, Obama was a pawn. He was a pawn in the George Soros game. I mean, the, the pompous, gullible fool. He thought he was a king. He was a pawn. Very much like Yosef Rubinet Biden was a pawn. And very much in the same way that uh, Shamalama Ding Dong Harris is a pawn. She is an absolute... She is nothing more than just a pawn for the George Soros hype machine. And don't ever forget... <clears throat> she was pretty much Nancy Pelosi's understudy, her student, if you will. And of course, you are going to have the chief apologists, like, let us say, Rachel Madcow or Richard Madcow, whatever the hell her name is, and uh, saying stupid crap like this. Take a look. Even if Trump doesn't win, the Defense Department Which and will. are going to need a new arrangement for all their rockets and for all the multi-billion dollar contracts Elon Musk's companies have with the U.S. government. The U.S. government is going to have to either, I mean, unwind from all of those contracts, or Elon Musk's companies are going to have to unwind from him. This is an untenable reality in national security terms. Now that we know what we know about Elon Musk. You know what? 
Richard Maddow, I mean Rachel Maddow, uh, probably should have been an actor instead of a journalist or a TV anchor, because quite frankly, that was the best acting job I've ever seen in my life. I mean, that is Oscar-worthy material. I mean, Golden Globe-worthy material. Um, People's Choice Award material. Whatever awards that they give for these kind of things. That was the best acting job I've ever seen out of Rachel Madcow. I'm dead serious here. Now, of course, you might remember that I did this video last week called Rational versus Irrational. Well, the Democrats are being the irrational ones. Whereas I believe most of the pubs, not all of them, of course, but a good <clears throat> percentage of them who are more grassroots, they're the rational ones, as opposed to the old establishment that side with the Democrats because it is politically expedient to do so. So they're the irrational ones as well. But, you know, Rachel Madcow, who is she to make any judgments? I mean, like I said, she might as well win an Oscar because she's such a, a good actress, but a really awful journalist. I mean, she can't even get the facts straight. She is one-sided as all get out. And she's one of those people that is pushing for censorship of content. Content like you're seeing right here on YouTube. Or Rumble, depending. But nevertheless, I mean, that's why you had Elon Musk uh, buy up Twitter, turn it into X, and make it into the free speech platform that it is now. I mean, you couldn't do that, let's say, five, six years ago, because they wouldn't allow free speech. As I said, look what they did to Trump. They kicked him off the platform. Elon allowed him back on the platform once he changed it over to X. So, I mean, and of course, you're going to have the morons like, uh, like Tim Pond Walls calling this guy gay. Uh, why? I mean, isn't he the one who does the jazz hands and the double lay like that? I would say that it's Timpon who's the gay one. Well, I'd like to say the F-A-G word, but I really can't. Not on this platform. So I'll just leave it at saying maybe Timpon has something to hide. Maybe he has more skeletons in his closet than any of us probably do. But nevertheless, let's just face the facts here. I mean... Today is it. This is it. Today is what matters. Today counts. And also remember, squirrel lives matter. And think about that. Think about poor Peanut, who was put down in his peak, put down in his prime by the evil fascist leftists who say, well, we're coming for your pets. We came for your children. We converted them in schools. And now we're coming for your pets because you can't have anything. So just think about that, meditate on that. And remember, get out there and vote today. This is your last chance. I already voted early, which quite frankly, I'm a little bit against early voting and I'm against, and I'm against uh, mail-in ballots, which we don't need anymore because the pandemic is over. It's been over for a long time. The lockdowns were completely unnecessary. The Democrats just did that to keep you locked up and keep you from getting your voice heard. That voice, of course, is the power to the music in the streets. I have been the Robozoid saying, remember <clears throat> that wokeness is weakness. Get out there and vote. Get your voices heard. It's your voice that counts. And also, of course, remember that, well, just be here or be nowhere. Now, depending on the outcome of the election, I might wear white if Trump wins. If uh, Harris wins, I'll probably just end up wearing black because that's what we're going to be expecting for the next thousand years. When uh, Elon said, if Trump loses, this could be the last election we'll ever have.